Hi, this is Frank. <laughs> <laughs> this three minute bio with Mr. D. <laughs> okay. Today we're going to be doing energetics um, and specifically the processes of glycolysis, uh, the Krebs cycle, oxidative phosphorylation, and fermentation. So the overall idea is pretty simple. You have a complicated molecule and that's glucose. Um, you're going to get glucose from several different sources. It's going to be stored in glycogen in your muscles, um, or it's going to be created from other energy sources, or you're going to eat it. But it's a rather complicated molecule. As it break in, is broken down, basically unfolded into a less complicated molecule, energy is released, and the whole process is aimed at getting that energy into a usable form. Now, really, the only usable form of energy we have is ATP. So anything else that it stores energy um, is going to have to be turned into NATP and into ATP later. So uh, the first step in the whole process is glycolysis. And that basically means glyco from glucose, lysis meaning breaking down, and it's a process that almost every single organism does. You take glucose, which looks like this, basically a six carbon ring, and you break it down into two three carbon molecules called pyruvate. You do this slowly in the process of seven steps, or several steps, each using an enzyme, and you generate ATP and NADH. Pyruvate can then be broken down further. It still contains energy. If you think of glucose as a full car battery, you can think of pyruvate as that car battery split into two and drained just a little bit. So you can make that pyruvate into a two carbon molecule called acetyl. We're just going to call it acetyl, although it's actually called acetyl-CoA. And then you lose CO2. If the organism has a mitochondria, it's going to come in handy at this point. If it doesn't, well, we're going to have to go a different path. But in the mitochondria, that acetyl-CoA is going to be broken down even further into basically the simplest molecule that it's going to become, CO2. It's going to release a bunch of NADH. You also have NADH coming from here. So if I take that NADH, bring it in here, and use this NADH, what I can do is power a pump on the inside of this membrane. And that pump is going to make H pluses go in between the membranes of the mitochondria. That's going to generate a concentration gradient, which you then tap. Uh, I don't know how to do this. Windmill. H pluses flow through a pinwheel in a molecule called ATP synthase. That pinwheel or turbine spins, forcing these two things together, ADP and phosphate, generating ATP. Now, almost all of these molecules have energy. ATP has energy, NADH also has a lot of energy, pyruvate has energy, and even CO2 has energy. However, they have different amounts and not all are usable by most processes in the body. Glucose has by far the most energy of all the molecules. All the other ones contain energy from glucose, and that energy is finally going to be transferred to ATP, which is going to be used by cellular processes, for example, transcription, translation, running, proters, pro uh, running motors, making proteins, um, and basically anything the cell needs to do. If a cell does not have a mitochondria, if it does not have this mechanism to convert NADH into lots of usable ATP, it runs a separate process called fermentation. And basically what happens in fermentation is you take pyruvate and you take NADH. You take the electrons out of NADH to make NAD+. And then you get either ethanol 
in CO2 or lactic acid. That NAD NAD plus can then cycle back into glycolysis and you can generate that 2 ATP. With the mitochondria, the release of energy is far more efficient because you're not wasting that NADH. With just glycolysis, you are not nearly as efficient, only generating 2 ATP per glucose molecule. That's about it. I'm pretty sure that was in three minutes. Clapping, please. Clapping!